Welcome everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, I believe this, this word is going to bless you. I believe it's going to be an encouragement. But before we get into it, let us pray. Dear God, we thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. Let us not pass you by with the that, that you don't pass us by with this opportunity to present us your word, Lord God, to receive your word, Lord God. Open up our ears, our minds, our hearts, our bodies, our souls, Lord God, to receive your word and your spirit, Lord God, that it may change us, rearrange us, that it may break bondages and uplift us, Lord God. In your precious name, we pray. Thank you, Lord God. Today's word is on Luke 7. Luke 7. And we're talking about the woman with the alabaster jar. On Luke verse 7, uh, Luke chapter 7, verse 36. And it says this, Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. So the Pharisee is asking Jesus, him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask or jar of fragrant oil and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wiping them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrance oil. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And I'm gonna stop it right there. So this Pharisee asked Jesus to come into his house and, and have dinner with him, to eat with him, to have lunch. So this Pharisee invited Jesus over. He invited him over, and uh, uh, the woman, this woman heard that Jesus was going to this man's house. She heard. Now, the very interesting thing is that nobody invited her. She heard. She made a decision. She heard, and she had faith enough to say, hey, I'm going to go. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. Right? So she heard. Just remember that for later. And then she begins to cry at his feet. She brings this alabaster jar, breaks it, and, and, and she begins to, to, to wash it over his head, over him, over his feet, clean him. But she's crying. She's at his feet, crying, bawling her eyes out. While she's doing this, see, you have to understand that She's, she's there. While she's doing this, everybody's watching. The Pharisee is watching. But this woman doesn't care. And the Pharisee thinks to himself, man, if Jesus only knew who was touching him, if Jesus only knew that this person is such a sinner, such a bad person, he wouldn't let her touch him. Touch him. That's what this Pharisee's thinking. That's what he's thinking to himself. But watch this. So as he's thinking that to himself, as he's saying that to himself, watch what Jesus says. Verse 40. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So he said, teacher, say it. There was a certain creditor who had two de debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with each, with each to repay, he freely forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him more? So Jesus is saying here, there is two people that owe this person money. One of them owes a little bit of money, 50, let's just say 50 bucks. The other one owes him 5,000 bucks. Okay, and I'm, that's not the, the right equivalent, but let's just say. 
So Jesus is asking him a question. He said, which of them will love him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. So he said, I suppose the one that, 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 that he forgave his debt that was bigger. That's the guy that's going to love him more because his debt was bigger. He owed him more money and he forgave him for that. Watch. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not stopped kissing me or kissing my feet since the time I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil. But this woman has anointed my feet with fragrance oil. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loves much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. So Jesus is saying, listen, you invited me in. You didn't kiss me. You didn't worship me. You didn't do all these things. This woman that, that supposedly you think is a sinner, she hasn't stopped worshiping at my feet. Her sins are forgiven. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. And those who sat at the table with them began to say to themselves, who is this that even forgives sins? Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Faith comes by hearing. She heard that Jesus was going to be at this house. And she said, I don't care. I don't care what I look like. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what anybody thinks of me. I don't think if anybody judges me, this person, the Pharisee, was judging her. She comes to Jesus' feet and starts worshiping God. Doesn't matter what she looks like. She's bawling her eyes out, crying, but she is there worshiping Jesus Christ. She didn't care what she looked like. She was bold enough to come to the throne of God. Everybody else is probably like, who invited this woman? Nobody invited her. Look at her. She's just a sinner. She's this. She's that. People are talking all kinds of mess about who she is. But she didn't care. She was going to get her breakthrough. She was going to get her miracle. She was going to get her sins forgiven. She was going she knows she doesn't deserve it, but she was going. She was bold enough to say, I don't care. I don't care if anybody invited me. I don't care. I don't care what you guys think of me. I don't care. She made up her mind. She was sick and tired of being sick and tired, and she needed an encounter with the Savior. It took courage. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Be courageous. Come boldly to the throne. See? Some of you guys ain't getting your breakthrough because when you worship, when you come before Jesus Christ, you're trying to look cute. When we worship at church and, 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 and we throw our hands up and sometimes we're like this or, or no, or I, I don't want to bawl my eyes out, eyes out because it looks weak. But don't you know that when you come boldly to the throne of God, when you come humbly to the throne of God, and you can do both, you can come boldly. This woman came boldly because she didn't care what anybody else thought. But she humbled herself while she was at Jesus' feet. You can do both. You can do both. You can be bold enough to say, I don't care what it looks like when I'm praising God. I don't care what anybody thinks that I follow Jesus Christ. I don't care. It 
See, there is strength at the feet of Jesus Christ. So while people are trying to look cute, forget about that. See, there is... Jesus is showing you two types of people in this passage. He's showing you two types. One, a sinner that is humble, that is bold enough to come to the throne of Jesus, of Jesus' feet. A sinner that says, here's my everything, Lord God. Here is all of it. I lay it at your feet. See, a jar of this type of uh, oil and fragrance was worth a lot of money back then. And that's probably the most valuable thing that she had. And she said, I give it all to you. I give you my all. Here it is, Jesus. She comes kissing Jesus' feet. Two types of people. One, a sinner, humble, giving their all, laying it down, having faith and trust in Jesus, laying it at his feet. The second, a teacher of the word, a person that, that always goes to church, a person that knows the word, a person that, that, that goes to church a lot, that knows the word, that reads the Bible, that goes it every time, but full of pride. See, Simon this Pharisee was full of pride inside, judging others for what it appeared. Look at them. They look crazy. Look at her. She's making a fool of herself. Full of pride. He knew God's word, but he missed the point. He knew the word, but he missed his blessing. He missed his opportunity. His opportunity was right in front of him. Jesus Christ was right in front of him and he missed it. He missed his opportunity to worship at the feet of Jesus Christ. I bet you there's a lot of people right now in church. There's a lot of people right now that go to church that are out there and every time they walk in and they're asking themselves, God, how come I'm not getting a breakthrough? God, how come you know what I, you, you see this? You, how come I'm, I'm not getting blessed? How come this? How come that? Because you're missing your opportunity. You sit there full of pride. You're missing it. You're missing it your opportunity with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is standing right in front of you. And you're like, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to show my feelings. I don't want to do this. I don't, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I don't need prayer. I don't need this. I don't need that. Uh, instead of coming humbly, humbled, before the throne of Christ, before Jesus' feet. Instead of bringing your problems to His feet, instead of bringing your suffering to His feet, don't miss. Don't be like this Pharisee, missing the point. When you worship God, worship Him with your all. Give Him your all. Lay it all on the line, like this woman did. She laid it all on his feet. Don't miss it. Don't miss Jesus. Don't let him pass you by. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. If you only lay it down. There's a lot of people that are missing the point. They're missing the point. You could be a, 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 a church-going person and miss the point all your life. You could study the Word 
and, and have knowledge of that, but you miss the point. This person did. Don't be like this person. Don't be like the Pharisee. Be like the sinner. See, we have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory. We're all sinners. But we lay it down at Jesus' feet to forgive us. We lay it all down at His feet. See, I want you to take a, a moment, wherever you're at right now, take a moment and just pray to God. Worship God. Give Him a second and forget what it looks like. Forget what it feels like. Just forget it and just give Him your all. I believe this morning God is saying, come near. A lot of people knew that Jesus was there and they missed that opportunity. I can tell you right now, Jesus is here. Don't miss your opportunity to worship. Don't miss your opportunity to praise. Don't miss your opportunity to get a breakthrough in your life, to get a miracle in your life. Don't let this moment pass you by. Today is the day. Don't say tomorrow I'll do it. Today. Jesus was not there the next day. He was there that day. Be bold enough to say, here I am, God. I know that I'm a sinner, but I love you. Here's my problems. Here's my everything. Here's what I have. Here's my shame. Here's my guilt. Here's my regret. Here's my brokenhearted. I lay it down. My burdens, my all, I lay it down at your feet, Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, come. Sinner, come near. Come to me. She didn't hesitate. She came to Jesus Christ. Don't be like those that come and just sit there. No. No. Be a worshiper. Worship God. Don't be like those ones that, that know the word and know and they think they're, they look good, they look cute. Oh, I look good today. Forget that. Come. Jesus is saying come. Lay it all down on him. Be forgiven. Be transformed. Be renewed. Be strengthened today. In the name of Jesus. There is hope, there is rest, there is salvation at the feet of Jesus Christ. There is forgiveness. Come to his feet. We thank you, Lord God. Let us pray. I hope this message blesses you and I will be praying for you. Dear God, bless that person right now, Lord God. Bless them. Lord Jesus, whatever they're going through right now, Lord God, whatever they've been going through right now, Lord Jesus, that they may praise you, that they may take a moment to praise you and worship you fully, Lord God, that they may be blessed and a breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Salvation in the name of Jesus. Miracles in the name of Jesus. We pray for you right now. Whatever is happening, if you're watching in a hospital bed right now, we pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. God knows what you're going through. He is there. Thank you. In your mighty name of Jesus. Amen.